Hello, welcome to the Film Studies Virtual Open Evening. Um, hopefully this evening we'll be able to answer some of your questions, give you a bit of an insight into what the subject involves. My name is Mark Dodsworth, I'm course leader for Film Studies, and uh, we've also got Anthony Luckman here, uh, who also has been teaching on the subject for many years. Uh, we've, we've both got a number of decades of, uh, of film teaching experience, uh, so hopefully uh, we'll be able to enlighten you as to what the subject involves. So just give it a, a moment for uh, people to uh, come in through the, the virtual waiting room and, uh, and get logged on, and then uh, we'll get started. Um, format for the evening, if it's okay with you, is I'll take you through a, a couple of slides uh, that indicate what you can expect if you uh, opt into A-level film. It's a, a really exciting subject. I think you get an awful lot out of it. Um, and then there'll be an opportunity for you to ask any uh, questions you might have. Um, uh, at the, uh, the, the, during the later stages of, uh, of, of the session. Okay, so I'll blast through five, six, seven minutes of uh, a broad overview, and then you should be able to um, ask us anything uh, you wish. Okay, so I'll just disappear for a second and uh, share my screen and give you an indication of what the subject entails. So hopefully uh, you can you can see. Uh, a large eye on screen now. Um, and then, okay. Um, so, film studies, it's a little bit like English literature in the sense that we explore a wide range of texts. It's just instead of poems, um, drama texts, and novels, we're exploring a really wide range of films Hollywood films, British films, global films, documentaries, experimental films, you name it, we explore it. And the course is very much a study in visual literacy. And I think we as teachers feel that's really, really crucial in the sense that we're confronted with so many images. That we need to be able to read them and interpret them and think about what they're doing to us and the way they make us think and the way they make us feel. So um, we start with what you know. The first unit really explores um, Hollywood films and British films. So we begin with big budget mainstream cinema, exploring Films like Christopher Nolan's Inception, um, uh, Damien uh, Chazelle's La La Land, uh, The Coen Brothers' No Country for Old Men. And we explore them from a spectatorship point of view. So we're thinking about uh, the way we as an audience um, are uh, marshaled to respond to these films in particular ways. We look at the camera work, we look at the staging, the editing, the sound design, the performance strategies. And we think about these filmmakers as um, expert puppet masters who are highly skilled in making us respond in particular ways. We also look though at the independent sector of film too. Uh, so we're looking at lower budget films and exploring the idea that they can offer sometimes a quirkier experience where uh, because there's less money riding on things, uh, they can allow us to confront more challenging ideas. So for instance, Winter's Born that we explore, uh, starring Jennifer Lawrence, is a film uh, that takes a, a few risks, more risks than the mainstream films, the big budget mainstream films that were on screen a second ago. We also go back into the past uh, and explore Hollywood films when things really changed and uh, film studios started doing things differently. So we look at films such as Blade Runner from the, the early 1980s and explore the way that ushered in a world of film spectacle. And the films we watch today all really stem from uh, the early 80s and the way things altered. We also move further back into Hollywood's past and explore uh, classic uh, films from uh, the golden age of Hollywood, such as Alfred Hitchcock's Vertigo. And we think about the idea that films are almost like sponges soaking up uh, the, uh, the, the history of what was going on at the time when they were, when they were made, um, effectively reflecting their context. So this is another thing that we explore in terms of film the notion that um, we can learn an awful lot about history, sociology, politics, by taking films to pieces. The British films we explore are really hard hitting. And uh, again, this is, has a, a sociological dimension. We're thinking about the idea that films can tell us things about British society. And we also explore how they're put together as stories, exploring their narrative structure. We look at a wide range of different theories when, when exploring British films. And even films that you're quite familiar with are unlocked by exploring them in these, uh, these distinctive ways. 
global film. We don't watch many subtitled films on the cost, but the ones we do are very exciting. And many of our students find City of God, the Brazilian gangster film, and Pan's Labyrinth, the, uh, the, the brilliant fantasy film, uh, some of the best things that we, we explore. Uh, we look at the idea that we learn a great deal about these cultures through the films that we watch. Experimental films, silent films, we delve into film history, thinking about how the very earliest filmmakers managed to tell stories um, without the use of recorded sound and the way more up-to-date filmmakers like Quentin Tarantino uh, break the rules and offer uh, experiences that are, are very different from the ones that we expect to find in uh, mainstream cinemas. Documentaries, uh, new wave film, silent movie texts, uh, we cover a really wide variety. Now, ultimately, those films and our exploration of them forms 70% of the course. Um, we sit two exams, and during those exams, we'd be writing about those films very much uh, like you um, would write about set texts in your English literature exams in, at GCSE. But we've also got 30% coursework, and in that, you get a, a significant choice. You can be a screenwriter, if you think about it, all the films and television shows that you watch start life as um, words on the page. Someone's got to invent the characters, invent the scenarios, and think about the best way to tell those stories. So we learn the craft of screenwriting. We also teach you technical filmmaking, how to shoot the film, how to edit it, how to make sound. So you end up with a, a really strong base of technical skills that you could take directly into the industry if you, if you chose to. So ultimately, we've got a course that blends coursework and exam assessment, 70% exam, 30% coursework, um, and uh, you become a, a complete film student in so much as uh, you have the creative, imaginative, practical skills with all that technical know-how, but you also understand the theory of how professionals make films and why they put them together in that way. Um, the coursework is something that starts in the first year of skills development, so um, we give you the skills, first of all, to think about how um, filmmakers are, are constructing films using camera work, editing, etc., uh, to make their meanings. And once we've got that in place, you're in a position to develop your skills as a filmmaker. In the second year, you produce uh, your own short films, your own, uh, your own screenplays, um, and you uh, grow in sophistication, evolving your ideas after, after the skills development of the first year. Okay, overall then, um, as a film student, you develop creative thinking skills, critical thinking skills. You become highly emotionally intelligent um, because we're always studying how messages about people are constructed. You develop really, really sophisticated analytical skills because you can take films to pieces uh, as, as well as anybody in the country and better. And Anthony and I uh, skill you in the art of really uh, teasing out the subtleties of film and television texts. Uh, your skills in textual analysis are very sophisticated. So you obviously enjoy films and television shows at the moment, but you would have uh, a real opportunity uh, to take apart um, texts in forensic detail. Communication skills. Uh, we make sure not to put you on the spot, ensure that you're not too anxious, uh, but we do encourage you to communicate your ideas in both spoken and written form. Research skills, literacy, technical skills, uh, we ensure that you've got them all. Now, our students have gone on to work in some very, very exciting uh, careers. So, um, as well as uh, working in journalism, uh, working in academic elements, um, we uh, ensure that we equip you for working in the film and television industry. So our students have gone on to work uh, with Edgar Wright on Baby Driver, um, uh, on the TV show, uh, Peaky Blinders, um, in all sorts of capacities, in, as, as camera operators, as editors, as designers, and some very, very um, high profile films. Ultimately, we're extremely successful. We've got 100% pass rate and have done uh, for, the, for the last 16 years. Uh, last year, 70% of our students secured uh, an A or a B grade. Um, which is well above the national average. Um, we ensure that there's something for everybody. We mix the genres. We make sure that 
Um, we aim for a 50-50 male-female cohort, so we, we're a um, highly representative subject, and we make sure that you get to explore your own ideas within your coursework. Ultimately, um, it's a subject that increases your employability. It's really highly regarded by universities, and uh, it can take you to a wide variety of career options. Um, entry requirements wise, you would need a four or above in English, um, and, uh, and that would ensure that you can communicate your ideas effectively. You're not just thinking things through, you can put them down on paper and voice them too. Okay, so um, uh, we're here obviously to answer any questions you might have as well. Uh, so um, does anyone have anything that they would like to address? Um, any uh, specific questions you want to ask us? Yeah, so a uh, question about other subjects that go well with film. Um, uh, we've got a wide variety of uh, different forms of film students that are uh, taking film in uh, for, for different reasons. We've got, um, sorry, I think my video has just disappeared. There we go. Okay. Yeah, um, we've got students that are taking the subject as an art subject, very much thinking about the construction of visuals. They're taking that with photography and graphics and fine art, media studies, um, because they want to develop those skills in practical film production and television production. We've got um, students that are taking the subject with humanity subjects, sociology, law, history, politics, and the subject has a great deal in common uh, with those. Uh, we've got students that take it with psychology because we're thinking about how the audience is manipulated by the things that they see. Um, a really wide variety of, uh, of different subject combinations. Uh, film is a subject that knits things together uh, very effectively. Okay, we've got a few more questions in. Anthony, do you want to uh, tackle any of the, the ones that have just arrived in? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, the first one about what different things can you do in your coursework. Your coursework will either be a screenplay laid out as uh, we teach you all the screenplay conventions about how you lay it out professionally, a screenplay for a short film that you've devised yourself, or you actually um, 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 create a short film yourself. We have all the equi equipment for you to film all of your footage, download it on the state of the art uh, um, uh, Max in a suite in our film room, which you, uh, on which we've got a double Premiere Pro editing suite so then you can edit your films until uh, you've got a final cut so it's either screenplay or, or, or it's film work uh, the actual creation of a film so that answers uh, Hannah's question as well I think um, first Absolutely. Uh, uh, first text studied in year 12. Uh, we do an introduction to film studies which lasts for about four to five weeks uh, uh, and then after that, um, uh, the first film that's one of our focus texts um, um, is Inception. Um, so we've just started at the, uh, well, we're about two weeks in now with the current year 12s in terms of teaching Inception, having taught them all the basics of, of uh, film analysis and all of the different uh, topic areas that we need to cover for the first few weeks. So you get a right from the start, if you haven't done any before, uh, right from the start, how do you analyze moving image film? How is meaning created? What are the different ways in which we uh, um, um, uh, explore how meaning is created and what films are telling us? And then we go into our, into our focus texts so we start with uh, one of our three, uh, one of our four sections for first year uh, is US cinema since 2005 and Inception's the one that we start with. Okay, excellent. Um, another question there um, about help with screenwriting. We, we make sure we support all students in terms of developing the, the skills they're going to need uh, to excel in their coursework. So we teach you a variety of, of, of theories that relate to uh, screenwriting and the way you can tell stories particularly effectively, how to build characters, how to build worlds, how to explore particular themes. And the quality of, uh, of our screenwriting that uh, our students produce is absolutely superb. Um, we've also had students uh, produce award-winning short films as well, because again, we take you through um, editing on um, Adobe Premiere Pro and this is something, um, a platform that we make available to you outside of college as well through the, uh, through the college's uh, networks. Um, you can access that and develop your skills um, and uh, extend them through use of Adobe After Effects and so on. So 
Um, we ensure that you become a highly, highly skilled filmmaker and a highly skilled screenwriter. Importantly, though, we've got some students that very much want to focus on creative writing. And therefore, they're effectively a bit like an American system. They major in their screenwriting. Um, and we've got other students that are very keen to work in film and television production. And they want to develop portfolios to show employers or, or prospective universities or higher level apprenticeships, depending on the route you want to go down. And we ensure that uh, uh, they can focus on that, the, the practical filmmaking, if, if they prefer. So we skill you up in both areas, um, support you um, extremely well, and um, then you get to choose which area of the coursework you want to particularly focus on. It's perfectly possible to produce a screenplay and a film if you really want to go for it and produce a really uh, slick and wide ranging portfolio. Uh, the question there about how good you have to be with technology. Um, the short answer is that the basic principles of digital film editing are remarkably straightforward. You're talking about dra dragging and dro dropping images onto a timeline, really. The sophistication comes in learning more and more about the software in terms of just how much you can do with that, how much you can add to it. But the basic principles of storytelling, in the end, what's important is the quality of the footage that you capture in the first place and how you put it together. But the print, the, what you need to learn in order to be able to use that technology is is pretty straightforward uh, and I might as well declare straight away that um, um, we should look to Mark uh, rather than me at Mark's level of expertise and being able to support you and tell you how you will be able to achieve anything that you want to do is is second to none uh, I'm kind of a, 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 a decent backup uh, but yeah you get all the support you need with it and it's actually very very the basic principles very straightforward you're selling yourself short there, aren't you? Uh, <laughs> um, certainly, it, it's um, it's very intuitive the uh, the, the editing program, um, and we give you plenty of time. There's another question on on screen asking when do we start the coursework. We do develop s skills in a kind of stress free, um, lower stakes sort of way, where uh, you get to um, in in the uh, kind of Christmas period of the first year develop skills in screenwriting um, and filmmaking. And there's a chance to, to just try things out, you know, and uh, see what works. Um, and um, with our support and, uh, and your uh, a, a approach to actually using what uh, is, as Anthony says, a very intuitive form, you soon uh, ensure uh, that you feel very confident. And then when it comes to the second year and you're producing final counting coursework, um, you're gonna feel like you can very much uh, excel and uh, take those skills uh, that you've developed a foundation in and, uh, and really build on them. Okay, so any, uh, any further questions? Uh, there's a question about uh, an, another one about subject combinations as well as things that are good for film studies. The other thing you might all want to bear in mind is that you do need to know that we're on 30% coursework but 70% exam and that's two, two and a half hour exams. So you do, you will be developing your essay writing technique uh, and you do need to bear in mind uh, another bit of advice might be that you want to look at what uh, tasks you're going to be carrying out in your, across your three subjects. You know, if you're doing three subjects that are very heavily weighted towards those exams, then you, you need to be ready for and willing to do an awful lot of, of essay writing. Um, how many hours a week uh, we study? Um, um, you've got um, five hours in class, uh, but then in order to do as well as you possibly could in an A-level, the general research indicates that you should be doing four to five hours a week per subject outside of class as well. You'll find that Mark and I make available all sorts of reading and additional uh, um, um, resources for you to go deeper into the various topics that we cover. And we recommend very strongly that you do that wider re reading, pursue some areas of your own interest in terms of background research. So there'll always be enough material there that isn't formally assessed, but that gives you a much deeper knowledge. And yeah, about the, all the research indicates with any A-level subject, about, about four to five hours a week uh, um, outside of class. And then you've got five hours of less, four, le four lessons all together each week, which comes to a total of five hours time of, of film studies uh, in lesson. I think significantly as well, because you're only um, studying three A-levels rather than the kind of packed multi-subject program you've got at GCSE. There is more time at college to uh, uh, to work on uh, the various things that, that you're looking to do um, in your own time. Um, uh, a question that do you have to do screenwriting and editing in the exam? So 
the exam is very much you taking apart films directed by other people and thinking about the meanings that they make and um, the way they've been put together. Uh, so it's a little bit like English literature, uh, but faster, more accessible. Um, and uh, we do tend to find that uh, people find it extremely engaging to take apart the films made by uh, the, the professions out, professionals out there, whether they be Hollywood films or British films or global films or whatever. Um, so the exam itself is, is written. The coursework, uh, that's where you get to your chance to, to, to work on screenwriting uh, or editing. And that's assessed by Anthony and myself. Um, we, we grade it. We, we help you to produce something as strong and as slick as possible. Um, and we're always giving you indications as to how it can be improved. And that means that you're always uh, producing something that's gaining higher and higher grades until final submission. Um, so that's where the editing and the screenwriting come in, and that's 30% coursework. Um, in terms of films available to view at home, we, 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 point you in, uh, we point you to the various locations where you can gain access to the focus films that, we, that we've studied. Sometimes it is possible to just give you links to some of the films are on YouTube at times and so on. But with others, sometimes it's a case of telling you what streaming platforms they're available on uh, at different times. It isn't possible. We don't have any way of streaming them from here as such. Uh, so it is just a case of keeping you updated of you know when there's a run of one of them being on iPlayer for a while, or we know one's on Netflix, we'll keep it flagged up for you. And where there are links that are, that remain active and that we can point you to various sites where you can just have direct access to them without without going through one of those other streaming platforms, then, then we do keep you updated about that. But it's not the case that we can provide a direct constant link for them. Uh, but you do see all of the films in full, all of the focus films we screen in less than time, as well as going through them. Uh, uh, going through key scenes with you after that. And we do have links available all the time to all the key scenes for all of the films. Yeah, a couple more questions, Justin. Uh, for the coursework, do you work in groups? And if so, what size? Uh, no, the, the coursework is, is individual. Now, um, that means that effectively it's your idea. You develop uh, the, the plot, you think about the characters, you think about the themes you want to explore. You think about what genre it wants to be. So we've got people who want to work in horror, others that want to work in apocalyptic sci-fi, drama, romance, um, gritty social realist drama. Uh, so we've got a really wide variety of, uh, of different types of film that people want to make. So in a way, if it was group work, it would be difficult because you'd always be thinking, right, whose idea would we go for? Um, but it's individual. So uh, whether you're writing or filmmaking, it's your idea. Um, you shoot it, you edit it, you mix the sound. Uh, and uh, Anthony and I as teachers, we're there to support you in that, in that process. So we're, we're your team of uh, technical supporters. Um, and effectively, it's very much driven by your own interests, uh, which I think is a really, really good thing. And our students really enjoy that uh, uh, independence and autonomy they get uh, pursuing their own ideas. Uh, we've got another question there. Um, do you want to take that one, Anthony? Are there a lot of foreign films analysed? Uh, in total, we do. We have two exam papers at the end of the two years, and there are seven topics. Uh, paper one has four topics. Paper two has three topics. One of the topics on paper one is two films not in English. So we have one European film, uh, a film in uh, Spanish, a, film, a great Gothic horror uh, war history film called Pan's Labyrinth. Um, and then we have a Brazilian gangster film called City of God, which is our non-European uh, uh, one. So that's actually uh, in Portuguese. Both of those obviously subtitled, but they're in one section. All of the other films are not foreign language films. I think it's interesting that with both of those films too, you forget about the subtitles. They're very, very visual films. They're not, they're not particularly talky. Uh, so as a result, um, you, you find they're just as engaging as the, uh, as the American films and the British films that we watch. And one of the reasons why the exam board do it and why we like teaching it is that as film students, you're obviously all quite keen on film, but it may well be that discovering just how many great films there are out there being made in other countries where the language isn't necessarily English, hopefully will be something that gives you hours and hours of new film and filmmakers that you can learn about and enjoy every bit as much as, as the stuff. You know, filmmakers across the world tend to refer to each other's work. So just because we're more familiar with English 
English language films doesn't mean that you won't get a great deal of pleasure and learn a great deal from seeing what's going on in other countries. A lot of the films you see that come out in Hollywood are actually remakes of films that have originally been made in other countries and other languages. Um, and so there is a whole uh, world of extra fun out there to find out and, and um, in terms of foreign languages films, films as well. And hopefully that'll be the, doing film studies A-level would be the start of that for you. Absolutely, it, it, it certainly opens doors. And it'll alter the way you view uh, the television shows that you watch as well. Um, uh, one of the questions that people often ask is, does it in some way uh, detract from your, your pleasure in watching the, what are fundamentally entertainments? But it, it doesn't, you, you're still entertained by them, but you can appreciate them on a different level as well as you can take them to pieces and think about why they're being put together uh, in the way that they have. Um, we've got another couple of questions. How long are the final written exams? So they're two and a half hours each. Um, and that's good because um, it, it might sound like a long time, might sound like a bit of a slog, but actually it provides a real opportunity for you to explore the, uh, the aspects of the films that you're really interested in. So one of the things about film, a little bit like English, as you study it now in GCSE, is it's uh, the sort of subject where you can interpret films. So say you're looking at Inception or a British film like This Is England or a foreign language film like Pan's Labyrinth, they're, they're very open to interpretation. You can take them to pieces, you can pick out the evidence to support your points. So for creative, imaginative thinkers, um, it's a, a subject that really works well. And that two and a half hours uh, for each of the two papers that we sit um, means that you get plenty of time to explore your ideas, back them up, um, and, uh, and ensure that your points have been uh, really, really effectively explored. Okay, so two and a half hours each. Um, it doesn't, there's no advantage to watching the films before the course starts, no, no problem with you watching them either if you want to, uh, um, uh, but we will be going into them in great detail and pointing you towards all sorts of additional resources to find out more about them. Uh, I think watch as many films as you can before the course, keep extending your, your love of film uh, is, is probably uh, more useful advice. The more different uh, filmmakers you become familiar with uh, uh, in different styles and different genres and so on, then the better your film knowledge becomes and, and the more I think you, you, you'll enjoy it. Um, uh, yes, you do get to film your own films if that's the, the option that you want to take in second year for coursework. You can either write your own screenplay for a short film or you can make your own film, which includes filming it and editing it. We've also got people, because you can book out the, the, the technology and book out the cameras um, and uh, you, you've got access to Adobe Premiere Pro to edit on um, at home as well. Uh, there are opportunities to, to keep making the films that you want to. So you make a film for your coursework, but we've had students that have produced a number of films over the, the two years, um, exploring you know, the ideas as they come to them. Um, and we even had, uh, around about three or four years ago, we had a student that made an entire two hour feature film um, while, while he was here with his friends. Um, and uh, it was really, really effective. And uh, he went on to study at the University of York St. John, which has got a brilliant production department, um, and it was shown in film festivals. So we've got lots of students that are um, making things for us to suit the demands of the year level, but also producing things that, that uh, really interest them using the technology that we're quite happy uh, to uh, loan out to you. Um, how many are in a class? Uh, so um, it's usually around about 1920 in, in a class um, and uh, uh, the rooms are quite big we make sure that everyone can see the the, the screen um, and uh, therefore you know the film's there for you to take to pieces uh, and we ensure that there's uh, enough for one editing machine uh, per student so um, no one's disadvantaged um, it, it tends to be a, a pretty comfortable and pretty civilized setup um, and uh, you're all very well supported field trips um, uh -huh. yes we do, we do have a couple of trips. Uh, do you want to go for this one, Anthony, or shall I? Uh, Mark better do this one because he's never invited me yet. I don't know what you have to do to get oh, on. It's harsh, own. harsh. I don't know. No, um, Nothing uh, personal. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the bright lights of New York, Beckin. Um, so we've been to, um, to New York to explore it as a media hub. And while we're there, uh, we look at various... Uh, New York landmarks, but we also go to the Museum of the Moving Image, uh, the Paley Media Center, um, NBC Studios to explore how their, their television setup works. Um, and we gain an insight into how these things work uh, within the industry. Um, we also have the, the London Film Trip too, 
where we go to Chocolate Films, which is an animation workshop where you learn how to do stop motion animation and a number of other forms of animation too. And we also, um, uh, we used to go to the BBC uh, and explore how that works and that might be back on the agenda uh, soon. Um, but we also go to the Warner Brothers Studios and do the Harry Potter Studio tour, um, exploring the production design element of it, the, uh, the trouble that they, they take to ensure that everything is absolutely perfect in the way it's staged. Um, and that tends to be a very popular trip too. Um, locally, we look at the Aesthetica Film Festival in York, which is a short film festival doing some uh, very exciting um, short film text across a really wide range of genres. Uh, so that's the most local trip we do, but we've also got London uh, and New York. And of course, it, in this area, it's becoming more and more a media hub in its own right. So Channel 4 have moved up to Leeds, the BBC have moved up to Manchester, and we've got a wide variety of independent film production companies on the doorstep. So there'll be more and more opportunities uh, to liaise with them uh, and use the, the links we've got available. Uh, you're, you're also allowed to take time out of uh, um, uh, classes at times to go on university open day visits as well. So you'll be able to go and visit film studies departments in, in uh, various universities whose courses you might be interested in taking after you've done your A-levels. Absolutely. Okay. So, um, so we've reached half past. Has anyone else got any additional questions you, you might like to ask uh, before we wrap things up? Yeah. So uh, we do um, offer a, a bridging experience for, for film students uh, in, in some capacity uh, so that you can come and try the course. Obviously, the current situation um, is, is making access to educational environments a little bit tricky, but you may have noticed uh, on the QE website, we've got um, a, a website dedicated to film, which talks you through uh, a variety of the things we offer. It'll back up the things that Anthony and I have been talking about tonight um, and also there are some sample lessons and those sample lessons give you a bit of an insight into uh, the, the way we would be getting you to think and to study um, and uh, and the way ultimately you take films to pieces. Okay, uh, got another question there. Um, okay, uh, have we got any extracurricular clubs uh, to do with film um, if we don't have a, a, an option space for it? Um, not as such, no. Uh, so um, everything that we do that's specifically film related um, is, is within the air level itself. Um, so we don't have a, a film club at the moment, but we have in the past had students who set up for their, for their two years here, their own film club. Um, so we, we had a student uh, just the other year which uh, set up a, a club dedicated to cult films and uh, a little team around um, him uh, discuss which films to show. They would screen the films and then they would run a discussion group. So it's not something that Anthony and I run specifically, uh, but it, it, we're very open to supporting student-led uh, clubs and societies so you could uh, indulge in your, your love of film. Okay, any more questions? All right. So it's maybe worth just saying just before you uh, just before you leave us um, uh, to talk about the the success of uh, some of our students. You can see on the on the on the board behind me the, the kind of places they've ended up. That's a, a, a small selection of the kind of high profile uh, career paths and job roles that people have ended up engaging in. And I think it's very important to remember that when you watch a film and the titles are rolling at the end, um, if you think about the amount of different roles, the, the writers, the editors, the sound designers, the cinematographers who are behind the camera, people working in all sorts of different aspects of staging, from lighting to costume, hair and makeup. We've had students that have gone on uh, to specialise in these particular areas. So as well as a, a, a course which um, looks at film in more general terms and uh, explores specific set texts, uh, we're, we're equipping you for, for, the, for the world of um, film production. Uh, and also, we've got a lot of students that have gone on to, um, to just continue their academic interest in film, people who like writing about films and exploring the, the way meanings are made. Um, so 
effectively we've got so many different offshoots and one of the one of the concerns and worries sometimes with subjects like film and media is where does it lead to but that sector of um, of the jobs market is growing uh, significantly quicker than other sectors at the moment if you think about the amount of online content that's needed uh, to entertain people and to inform people it's little wonder uh, that given you know the unfillable nature of the internet uh, that um, uh, the skills that we're developing in film are ending up being some of the most sought after out there um, in the uh, the marketplace at the moment. Yeah, it's 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 often comes as a surprise to people to find out really. If you say you want to be a famous leading actor or you definitely want to be a director, that's something that's much more in the lap of the gods and, and is not something that you can assume. But anyone who wants to get into working in film or television production, provided you're going in and you're working at a creative level, there are endless amount of opportunities, uh, provided you, you're willing to get yourself out there and and, and uh, engage. I think the the secret is and people ask us advice about this all of the time what can you be doing to strengthen your case as well as doing film studies and possibly a film and television production degree the trick is that on the creative side of things you need to be building a creative portfolio from right now if you you know it's not too soon to start if you like making films editing films working with special effects keep records of everything that you do digitally and build that into a portfolio because you when you go to interview for production courses you know everyone's going to say yes they love this and they want to work in it they're going to ask to see what you've done over and above the things that you do as part of like the coursework in your in your actual film studies a level course they need to see that you've you know if you've got a mate who've got a band uh, film them live do music videos for them do uh, um, do all sorts of projects that you edit and then put on youtube yourself that kind of thing the more you can demonstrate that you've voluntarily developed skills and you've got a, a record of being able to, to demonstrate that an interview that's what gives people uh, uh, gets people ahead at interviews and gets them on the gets them on the courses and, and gets them a start in in that business really absolutely i think it's worth um, mentioning as well isn't it that um it's not just feature filmmaking that that uh, people are going into it's, uh, it's the world of advertising it's the world of marketing and um, think about all the big companies across the land they've all got a marketing department uh, where they're thinking about how moving images can be used to, to, to sell what they produce. And the idea of um, representing things in a really positive light, um, it, it might not be just storytelling, it might be other elements of uh, uh, the, uh, the moving image um, landscape out there uh, that you move into, but the skills you develop in the film are always gonna be significant and useful. Okay, question there. Um, can you use school facilities for making movies at home? Uh, yes, you can. Uh, so um, we've got the entire Adobe Creative Suite available to you outside of college. Uh, so that's um, uh, Photoshop, Adobe InDesign, and um, the, the kind of technologies that you can use, the applications rather that you can use uh, to create things that are more print based. But you've also got um, Adobe Premiere Pro to edit on, where you, you are importing your filmed footage. It may be directly from your phone, it might be from one of our cameras, um, directly onto it. Um, and then you're sequencing your shots, mixing sound, etc. cetera. Um, and uh, as Anthony intimated earlier on, it's, um, it's a very intuitive process. You get used to it very quickly. Um, and we've also got access to After Effects as well. And we've had lots of people who are very interested in, in working in uh, computer generated imagery. And that's a, a big, big sector in its own right. Uh, digital imagery uh, and ensuring that you are uh, capable of enhancing the images on screen, which is uh, a big part of, uh, of, of filmmaking um, today. Um, it's not just about pointing a camera at something, it's about all the post-production effects that you can do uh, to, uh, to alter the image. Um, and as you know from your own phones, the addition of filters, the, uh, the tweaking of contrast and color balance and so on, um, it's, it's become a, a really big part of how images are put together and you've got access to that at home too. Okay. Any more questions? Okay. Well, I hope, hope that's been useful um, and uh, has offered you a wide variety of insights into what we offer. Um, we've got, like I said, um, the, uh, the, the QE um, 
website has access to various subject websites. Um, hopefully you can gain a, a, some sense of, of how film would fit in with the other subjects that we offer. Um, it does knit things together very, very nicely. I think it's worth saying as well that our students enjoy their film experience greatly. Um, we do a student views questionnaire and film scores incredibly highly. Um, hopefully it's because we offer a very supportive environment to learn about something that you already love uh, and to add a little bit of complexity to that um, and help you to see uh, how nuanced and sophisticated films are. Um, so if you've got any other questions, feel free to email us. Uh, you can ring the college directly or you can email uh, the college inquiry site and uh, myself and Anthony would be more than happy uh, to, uh, to respond to those.